So now in recent videos we've been using the light dependent resistor there to control things by making it part of a voltage divider as we're doing again in this video but we greatly improved this this one is not uh, near important what the fixed value resistor is at all the thing that matters the most for uh, the light level is the uh, trim pot here so I'll demonstrate that right now with the light level the way it is the output is high we get it a little bit darker and the output goes low. Now this is adjustable, so I got the lamp, I turned it down more, there you can see it went low, and I turn it bright enough, it gets high. So let's go all the way up to the brightest setting, and then go down two, and that's where we want it to switch to high. And there we go, we turn the trim pot, right now it's low. So at this brightness, it's not uh, bright enough, in fact we can't get it bright enough to set it high, because the trim pot's all the way up but we can slowly turn the trim pot down. And right when the LED turns high, that will be the red LED lights up. There we go. The output's high right now. That was the point now where it will switch. I'll make the lamp a little bit darker. There you can see that the blue LED lit up. And then we get back to the brightness we were. The red LED lights up. Of course, we get even brighter. The red LED will stay lit. There we go. That was the light level to switch it. You can see I can shade it to switch it back and forth as well. So now we're going to do a little bit of a step-by-step -step build. I, You can see everything pretty well. So I just removed the light dependent resistor and the fixed value resistor for now. But uh, we're using the LM358 op amp. There's two of them within the integrated circuit right there. We're only going to use one of them. So you can see LM358, one out of two. And if you're going to use the second one, or they recommend a second one or something, you might see two out of two right there. But uh, in any case, we got the one out of one. We have our output, let's cover that first. That is the pin number one up there, top left pin. You can see my little jumper comes to where the two LEDs come together. The blue LED, as we said, lights up when the output's low. That means it connects to ground, and it does a really good job of that. So we have a higher value resistor, plus blue LEDs get a bit brighter, 1000 ohms. So there you can see positive supply to the long lead, the anode on top, short lead the cathode down to the bottom to the jumper. So there's the uh, cathode there uh, going down, anode up. For the red LED, we are going the opposite way. It lights up when the output goes high. So it doesn't connect to five volts near as well as it does to ground. So it'll probably be about three and a half or something. But in any case, that's enough to get the red LED to light up. And since we're losing some voltage, red LEDs aren't as bright, 220 ohms should uh, get more current flowing through it. So it gets about the same brightness as the blue LED. So there's the output, it's high to the anode, cathode down there, and heading to ground, as you can see there. Now, an important thing to remember, the, the output right there, that's pretty straightforward, top one. So right below it is the inverting, that's a minus, even though I know it's kind of hard to see. And then the plus is right below it. You can see on the schematic, I have the plus above the minus so they are the opposite and I always look at the data sheet to get uh, the correct pin layout whenever you're using an integrated circuit but in any case you gotta remember they're flipped on here sometimes the minus might be on top the plus on the bottom but in this case plus is on top minus is on the bottom so you always got to look carefully at where the plus and the minus is on the schematic it could be either way whatever the uh, designer wanted to do so we have the uh, trim pot so that's to the inverting input. We gotta make sure we go to pin two, second one down. And you can see that we have this little jumper coming across to the uh, trim pot. So the middle pin is the wiper. It slides across a resistive element. Resistive element going all the way from positive to negative there because of those two jumpers. As you can see, we got plus five. We're using five volts in the circuit. This is a 10,000 ohm trim pot. Doesn't really matter, but trim uh, 10,000 is uh, pretty nice. Wherever you set it, that's gonna be a fraction of the voltage between five and uh, zero. And uh, so we don't need any current going in or out. So we can use a fairly high value uh, trim pot uh, pretty nicely. Now we will add the light dependent resistor. So again, it's going to the non-inverting input. As I said before, we have to pay close attention that we go to the right pin. So it's lower on the physical component, whereas it's higher in the schematic. And it's always the same on the physical component, but the schematic, it may flip uh, back and forth, as I said before. So third one down, we're gonna go to the positive supply and to help uh, not block other stuff, I'm just going to uh, put it to the positive jumper up there. To uh, pin eight, where the positive uh, supply for the component is. You do have to power the component, of course, and uh, pin eight positive 
pin four down there is ground. Also, there could be a negative voltage. Ground could be a middle point, and then your negative voltage would be down uh, there to pin four and the positive up there. So we have the light dependent resistor. As it gets brighter, it'll make a better connection to the positive supply. And so we're gonna add a resistor here to the negative supply so that we get a fraction of the voltage, the voltage divider. And uh, since we have a ground right below it, I'm just going to go from the non-inverting input to ground with uh, the resistor there. And we have our voltage divider like that. So I'll uh, grab the power supply. We should be wired up properly. The only thing I did was remove the light dependent resistor and the fixed value resistor and uh, put them back. Uh, so there we go. We get a little bit darker and the output goes low. So now, of course, it's best to take a look at uh, voltages. We have the pocket oscilloscope, the alligator clips come out uh, from it. Our voltage is gonna be measured in relationship to ground right there. So that's uh, zero volts down at the bottom there. If I take the uh, red one and put it to uh, zero volts, you're gonna see a solid line a lot better at the bottom there. And first, let's take a look at the output. So that's where the two LEDs come together, the jumper going to the output, as we saw before. And there you can see a high output looks like a little less than three and a half volts approximately, as I said before. And I thought this would go to ground better, but it looks like we're only getting about uh, one volt, maybe because of the amount of current we have to uh, put through it or uh, something else. But in any case, it should uh, go to ground, but that's okay right there. We're, we're definitely getting the higher low. That's what we need for this circuit. So that was the output. Let's look at the uh, trim pot now. And uh, so we just come across. And so that is the inverting input right there that uh, we are going to. And there you can see we got uh, four, looks like about uh, 0.2 volts. And the reason for this one now is we can go up to five volts there or down right there to zero volts. And let's uh, change the light level. Let's go all the way up and then go down uh, two. So actually that, that was the same light level. But uh, for that light level, there we go. We are uh, too high now, the output is low. We want it so this light level is right where the output uh, switch is high. So we're not gonna get it perfect, but we're gonna get an estimation right there. Uh, we got uh, the output, it's a little bit more than uh, four volts. So now let's look at the voltage of the light dependent resistor. So this is important that we remember uh, that line there, because it's when it crosses that line where the output uh, should change. So I would think this would be a little bit higher, but for some reason at uh, this point, it's high enough, it's close enough to that point that the output is high. You're gonna see that uh, when I cover with my finger, the voltage goes down and then it uh, flips. So it's lower than that point that it was before. And now for some reason it's, it's high enough, but you can see when I get it brighter, the voltage goes up uh, even uh, more. But main thing was we set this point right here where the voltage goes high or low enough where uh, the output will change because it's comparing those two voltages. And to help explain that, we'll come back to the schematic diagram. So you can see we got the non-inverting input, the plus, and the inverting input down there, the minus. When the non-inverting input has a higher voltage and the uh, voltages may have been thrown off because this pocket oscilloscope I'm using uh, isn't as good as a high quality one. But in any case, when the voltage gets uh, any bit higher at the non-inverting input than what the inverting input is, then you get a high output. What happens is the output rises until the voltage is equalized, but there's no feedback, so they never equalize here. So it just rises right to as close to the positive supply as it can. Now, when the non-inverting input has a lower voltage than the inverting input. You lower that voltage enough, then the output uh, drops low. So it lowers until they equalize, but again, they never equalize in this circuit. And uh, so it just drops right down, low output to ground right there. So in any case, that's how the basic property of op amps, you can use feedback and stuff, so they will equalize at some point and you'll get an actual uh, voltage out. But this circuit, it just goes to whatever extreme is can within its limits. So in any case, hope that makes sense. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.